to be graded and then uh, it's going to be returned to you uh, a week from now. Right? And uh, the uh, points, the grade of your homework is very important. Maybe I'm going to count about 50% of the final exam, 50%, something like that in your grades. Okay? So, uh, uh, or about the homework, you guys have to uh, put your effort, effort on the homework to have a good grade. 50% or 50%. Right? Uh, last time we have discussed about the lattice wave and we have talked about the light wave, right? And for the lattice wave, we use the stream under tension. We use a model, a string under, a string under tension. And we basically, we have used the uh, Newtonian F equal to MA and uh, to get the wave equations, right? The light wave, we use the Maxwell equations. One, two, four, okay? So we just manipulate <coughs> mathematically the Maxwell equations to get the light wave. Today, we are going to uh, talk about the matter wave. Uh, we are going to talk about the electron, the whole things like this, a matter, and then we want to transform the substance into the waveform. How can you do this? We are going to use the Schrodinger equations. Schrodinger equations. And he got the Nobel Prize with uh, this uh, <coughs> development of the uh, equations. Well, It is not that difficult to understand the Schrodinger equations. I'm going to explain about the Schrodinger equation for five minutes, and that is enough to understand the Schrodinger equations. Say, we <coughs> set the wave and the general solution of the wave is e to the i kx minus omega t, okay? The general wave uh, equation solution is going to look like this, right? That's what we know. And this part, this can be, <coughs> sorry, Distinguish to the i k x and e to the minus i omega t, and this is a time <coughs> independent independent term, and this is the time dependent term dependent. Okay, so we can distinguish that time-dependent and time-independent terms like this. And we use the psi for the time-independent term, and then e to the i omega t. So <coughs> the wave equation can be represented with this equation, time-dependent term and time-independent term. Now, 
the characteristic of the exponential, we can uh, see that round t, round psi is going to be minus i omega uh, phi like this, right? And then uh, if you make a second derivative of this with respect to the x, this is the first derivative with respect to the t, and this is the second derivative with respect to the x, then we are going to have something like this. This is the characteristic of the exponentials. So from here, we can say the omega can be set like round t round phi, like this. And from here, the k square, wave number square, can be set as, uh, with respect to the wave equations just like this, right? And then at this point, what we're going to do is the uh, particle and wave interrelationship on the point of energy and the momentum. Momentum, okay? The particle that is p square 2m plus potential energy. This is the kinetic energy for the particles, right? And wave is just a, a function of the frequencies, omega. And momentum case the particle mv, right? And the wave case, the h by k. So, all we have to do is just to put these things together to have, say, the wave in a, in a, the energy in a particle that is going to be 2m plus potential energy something like this, right? And then if you represent this with the wave equation, then it's going to be uh, h bar omega. And then the omega h bar omega, omega here, we put that thing, that is going to be 1 over i psi round t or round psi, something like this, okay? And here, the, since the momentum is h bar k, if you put this thing in other terms like uh, in a wave equation, h bar square k square, that is the momentum, uh, and then you can set this. So this is the wave representation of the energies. So you can equate this term and this term together, then you end up with h bar minus 1 over i psi, round t, round psi, okay, that is going to be h bar 2m minus 1 over psi, round x square, round square psi, plus potential energy. So everything is set in terms of the wave, okay? You some uh, rearrange this thing, then 
it is not difficult to get this simple equations. Minus h bar square, 2m, round x square, round square psi, plus potential energy times psi. And we call this time-dependent Schrodinger equation. All right. Now, if you separate the psi in terms of the time-dependent term and time-independent term, then it is not that difficult to have a time-independent Schrodinger equation, which is going to be called time-independent Schrodinger equations. All right, and then that is round the square psi over round x square plus 2m h bar square e minus potential energy psi, and that is zero. That is time independent Schrodinger equation. And this is a time-dependent Schrodinger equation. It's a simple. And E Schrodinger got a Nobel Prize just with this derivation of the equations. Amazing. Now, at this point, let's just think about the psi for a minute. What is the meaning of psi x? Okay. The psi x is a wave function, and uh, with, uh, with a uh, boundary conditions, you can get a energy state. And this psi nx is going to be called eigenfunctions. Eigenfunctions. That's the wave equation. And en is the eigenvalue. That is the energy of nth excited states. OK? So you know, this uh, psi square is going to be the probability of finding a particle in a space x. So this is going to look like this. And this is the most probable position to find the particle in the wave equation, the wave form, right? So well, when you have this, then we can uh, summarize the meaning of psi x like a, a psi star psi dx is psi square dx, and this is a probability. Probability of finding a particle between x and x plus dx. Something like this, right? And uh, to have this uh, uh, probability, you can set a, b, psi star, psi, dx is a constant value. And then uh, you can normalize that, like psi star, psi, dx should be 1. Normalization. 
Jason for probability. In other words, in a space A and B, between A and B, to finding a, uh, the probability of finding a particle is one. When the particle is captured in a space A and B, between A and B, right? Now, in a time independent Schrodinger equation, it has a potential energy, energy here. So, as an example, we're going to apply this time independent Schrodinger equation to three situations. First, we are going to demonstrate the shredding equation, the matter wave, when the potential energy is equal to zero. zero. That means it's uh, free electrons. Free electrons means it just have a kinetic energy and uh, no potential energy, right? And then we're going to use that when the potential energy is equal to gx square, the spin constant. That is a linear harmonic oscillator. Linear harmonic oscillator. Right. So a free electron means it's a metal system. That is for the metal system, right? In a metal system, there are specific number of electrons not belonging to any specific atoms. We call that free electrons. So we want to know, we want to use a shredding equation for that case to find the behavior the energy states of free electrons in the, uh, in the metal and the wave equations corresponding to that the free electrons. That can be understood by uh, solving the Schrodinger equations for that boundary conditions. And in this case, linear harmonic oscillator, you know, the solid is connected to the nearest neighbors by the uh, Coulombic attraction and repulsion thing. So we can say that is uh, x, y, z directions. It's oscillating, but not really free. It cannot be out of the position. It just uh, uh, stays there with the vibration. That is the oscillator. Okay, so it, this is uh, related with the phonons, lattice, uh, lattice, uh, similar to the lattice uh, wave case. Okay. Now, finally, we're going to apply this to the case where the potential energy is the uh, hydrogenic atoms. Only one electron which is circulating with this uh, potential energies. That is a Coulombic uh, force between the uh, proton and the electrons. So this is a hydrogenic at atom. We want to understand what happens when electron is uh, circulating, orbiting uh, the uh, nucleus, and what kind of energy states it can have. Okay, by solving the Schrodinger equations 
regarding this electron as a wave, things like that. Okay. So uh, we are going to apply that Schrodinger equation, especially the time-independent Schrodinger equation for three cases, and uh, we can understand what's happening for that case with a different potential energy. Let's see. Uh, let's do the free electron case first. Probably that is the most simple uh, case among those three cases. And that is uh, confined free electrons. Mathematically, it means that the potential energy is infinity outside this box, but inside this box, the potential energy is zero. So there is a, a three, and then uh, the dimension of this is one dimension thing, let's say the length L, okay? Then what kind of energy states it can have if there is a uh, free electron captured inside this box, okay? Well, the Schrodinger time independent Schrodinger equation is just E psi is going to be h bar squared 2m round x square round square psi and then potential energy and then psi x. Okay, that is the uh, just this, you just to manipulate that equation, then you can easily get this equation. And in the free electron case, the potential energy is equal to zero. So the <coughs> equation is nothing but. E psi is going to be minus h bar square over 2m round x square round square psi. Right? That is for the free electrons. And the general solution for this equation, let's assume that it's going to be e to the i kx plus b to the e to the minus i k x. That is the positive direction and the negative direction's movement of the wave. And then e psi is going to be h bar square over 2m minus k square psi. You just put the rest. You just put the second derivative of the psi with respect to x end up with minus k square of itself. So it can be 